I'm just going to talk a um, very high level overview around the work that's taking place in Scotland um, in terms of how we are supporting the spread of um, hospital at home um, across HSCPs in Scotland. So hopefully you can see my slides. Yeah, it's all good, and Leanne. Thank you. Great, okie dokie. Um, so my name is Leanne Marshall Woods and I'm an improvement advisor in the Improvement Hub in Healthcare Improvement Scotland and part of my role is working on the Hospital at Home National Programme um, which is to support HSCPs across Scotland which are at 31 to develop and deliver hospital at home services. Um, I'll just put, I'll just kind of highlight now that's not been mandated across Scotland. So although there are 31 HSCPs, not all of them are um, developing services, but I will come on to that um, later on. So I am fairly certain I am not telling anybody anything new. Um, but for those who don't know, hospital at home in Scotland in particular is a service that provides acute hospital-led care by healthcare professionals in a home context for a condition that would otherwise require acute hospital inpatient care. And I, that's kind of the definition that we're working to. And I will come on to some of the key elements that underpin that definition um, shortly in my presentation. So just a little bit about the context um, in Scotland. So we are focusing very much on admission avoidance and also early discharge so not necessarily um admission avoidance in all areas but where a patient would need to, to remain in hospital they're getting out earlier because they can be under the care of hospital at home um, and as has already been mentioned that does avoid those patients um you know uh, experience some of the adverse effects of inpatient care Scottish Government are highly committed to seeing this model of care spread in Scotland and it is part of a wider work um, to redesign urgent care. Um, Scottish Government has provided some funding um, for this and again I'll come on to that um, and it was is, is part of the priorities um, that were set out by the CABSEC. So this should, um, again, this should be news to nobody, but it is something that we have experienced kind of a lot of confusion around. Um, and, and what this infographic should do is to really reinforce where hospital at home sits. There has been um, confusion around, is this a community service? Is this just another form of enhanced community service? Um, and it's not. So as has been kind of described a number of times in the presentations already today, this is acute care that for patients that would other, otherwise require hospitalisation. But it is, it, it's a new model of care. It requires different ways of thinking. Um, and so we, we kind of came up with this infographic just to be able to reinforce that, that message that it's acute care and that it sits within the community. So I did mention the definition before, um, and that has come from the guiding principles that we developed. Excuse me, I can see a inflatable llama behind me, so he's just going to go on the floor. Um, so I did mention the um, definitions that we came up with, and I wanted to point out that they're in, underpinned by some key elements. Um, but whilst there's a number of them on the screen, there's four in particular that in Scotland we've pulled out as being able to define your service model as hospital at home and one of those is the severity of the condition managed again that's been mentioned a number of times today we work with teams who deliver hospital at home service who've managed patients with sepsis heart failure so again just to reinforce that these patients would normally require admission to an acute hospital setting Again, it's already been mentioned, um, but a hospital specialist acts as a senior decision maker and responsible medical officer. As, if, as would happen if a patient was admitted to hospital, the care of that patient is under a consultant. Urgent level access to hospital -like level diagnostics and the care is, is delivered by multidisciplinary teams. So those are the four key pillars in Scotland um, that allow you to define your service as hospital at home. And those um, so HSCPs that we're working with, a lot of them already meet those definitions, whereas if they are developing services, we're supporting them to understand how they can meet that criteria. There are other elements, but those are the four key ones. I'm just trying to move on. So the next few slides are around what have we done in Healthcare Improvement Scotland and how how do we provide our support? So at the very early stages of starting the programme, we took the time to understand what challenges and opportunities were out there. And that informed, <coughs> excuse me, how we designed our programme. 
Some of these challenges could be addressed nationally. Um, and again, I'll come on to that in a moment. And some were able to form part of the work that we do when we work directly with HSCPs. It was really important for us to be able to spend that time early on to understand what are the challenges um, to understand what our support could be. No, I'm sorry. So what, what do we do? So this slide really just describes in a nutshell what our programme of work is. So the aim of our work is to support the implementation of hospital at home across Scotland. And that's split up into three work streams. So implementation support, that is the direct support we work with provide to HSCPs. So whether that's QI and project management, whether that's supporting teams to access the national funding that I mentioned earlier, because that wasn't that was a um, situation where teams needed to bid for that and meet certain criteria and to work with the teams to overcome barriers and, and, and understand opportunities as well and be able to share them across Scotland and wider. The next uh, work stream is the de delivery of a national learning system and I will emphasise this in a moment um, but that really encompasses networking, sharing good practice, providing resources and the development of an implementation package and again, I'm going to come on to show you a bit more about that. And the final area of work that we we do is around national infrastructure. So we've developed a national measurement framework. At the moment, we're working with our colleagues in Public Health Scotland to understand how that can be pulled from existing systems. Um, but until that is developed, we are asking teams and teams do submit that um, just via an Excel toolkit. But what we're able to do from that is to amalgamate data to understand what the picture across Scotland is. Um, we work with teams to develop business cases. Um, funding was available, but it's short term. Um, so how can they go back to their boards and ask for more funding? So we're working with teams to do that and to be able to demonstrate the impact that their services have had. And workforce frameworks such as competency frameworks and things like that or national job descriptions just to be able to kind of provide that national support there. So I mentioned the learning system um, and I'm going to just touch on that very briefly. So we um, initially had a learning system that involved um, topic summaries. We, we based it on the challenges that people talked about and so we had a number of topic focused um, sessions so things like leadership technology which I, Dan very kindly came and spoke at that one um the different elements workforce um and and all of those were where we had experts come on and talk, talk about how that how that's been addressed in hospital home services that exist we also developed a number of resources um and shared very importantly we were able to share resources that were developed by teams so that new or developing teams didn't have to go and re reinvent the wheel they could just adapt something that had been done by other health boards and that is all packaged up in, into an implementation toolkit now as i've said we've needed to evolve the learning system for phase two which is it which is the year starting 21 22 um we used some feedback to kind of develop this. Well, we don't really have those learning um, sessions, virtual learning sessions anymore. What we do now is podcasts, again, based on the feedback from teams about what, what's important for them to learn about. So we've done podcasts based on clinical invo uh, patient involvement, um, pharmacies, pharmacists embedded within hospital or home teams and so on. And we're continuing to develop those um, and, and they're available um, if anybody would like to go and listen to them. We are also um, delivering project surgeries. So they are basically short drop in sessions or held over a lunchtime hosted by um, experienced hospital or home practitioners. And that allows anybody who is developing services or those who are already delivering services to come on and just ask questions of colleagues in, in, in the same position as them. We develop newsletters to keep our teams up to date and to understand where they are in relation to other um, services and we deliver networking events. The networking events that we do are closed to only those who we are working with and that allows really free conversation and it allows teams to pose questions to their colleagues that they, they're not recorded, um, we don't take notes from them um, and it really allows that free rich conversation. So that's just a little bit about kind of what we do um, in terms of the learning system. But where are we? Um, with hospital at home. So when we started the national programme, there were services in seven of the HSCP areas. Um, so that was at the start of 2020, 2021, when we started to work on this. 
in the first year, I mentioned there was a small amount of funding available from Scottish Government um, to support startups, um, startup services, and we worked with seven teams to support them to access this and to develop service services. And I think out of those seven, I think it's six have started their services, and um, the remaining team is. I think they're. I think they're ready to start in January. So that's really heartening. And then, and we're in the second year of the programme now, and further funding was available, which has brought the total number of HSCPs that we're working with to 20, which is 65% of Scotland. And I think that's just fantastic work from the teams involved to be able to get to this stage um, in, in less than two years and with, with relatively small amounts of funding as well. And like I said, part of the work that we, the part of the support we provide will be to work with teams to develop economic evaluations to be able to demonstrate the impact to boards. I mentioned the resources that we have um, uh, I've mentioned the resources that we have developed. We I did talk about the guiding principles. They were developed pre-COVID um, and there's a lot of information in there for service development. And then the implementation toolkit encompasses all of the work from, from phase one of the programme. Um, and we are adding to that with all of the learning from phase two as well. And, and I would encourage you to have a look at that. I thought I'd better pop a slide in about technology, um, given the reason we're all here. And unfortunately, I don't have much to say. We are um, in Scotland probably quite lagging behind in terms of what, what is happening with technology in hospital or home services. But what we have found from, from, from kind of consulta consultations with the teams is that high tech solutions aren't always the most effective. It is definitely day to day technology that they're using um, that is making it easier certainly to communicate communicate where patients need to be able to use the technology as well if things have been tested and then dropped because it wasn't access accessible to the patients but things like um, just an example Microsoft Teams has been used to kind of the fullest advantage we're working with a team in NHS Fife who have got a fantastic way of measuring their capacity um and acuity of the patients, but what the, what they've managed to do, and 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 they're just spreading it now to all of the GPs GP referrers that they work with. They've got a kind of a, a live status that uh, GPs can look at before they even call to see whether you know they've got a red amber green status. So is the service full or can they accept patients? So it's those kind of solutions that teams are coming up with that do seem very simple and um, but are incredibly effective. There are teams using general equipment such as portable ECG machine, mach machines and so on. Um, I've already mentioned it's key to be aware of the audience. So if you're wanting patients to use something, make it patient accessible. But in kind of just the last week or so, there are um, teams about to start point of care testing for blood testing. And we're working with them to do that within an QI um, way so that we can determine the impact that that's having and and how how effective it is. So we're looking forward to finding out how, how that goes. So key reflections, we've been very lucky in Scotland that the political commitment has been there and that there has been funding available um, for these teams. We're not kind of fooling ourselves, there is still a way to go. We have only got 65% of the population covered, but that is a, a big step forward from where we were two years ago. I would say as well, um, and COVID has been an an opportunity almost um, for teams to be able to get hospital home services in place. Patients don't want to go to hospital. Um, so where pa patients may have been wary before, um, it certainly is something that, that they're, they're much more willing to consider at the moment. It is a significant cultural change for the workforce. We're not just asking people to build on an existing service. We're asking people to totally redesign the way we deliver the, um, care. So I think it's really important to recognise that and to engage. I think one of the key things that we've learned, particularly um, where teams are engaging with their consultant colleagues, because we're asking consultants to work in an incredibly new way, is to engage from the start, work with people and sell the benefits to them. Thinking creatively about staffing, there is a finite pool of, of staff, so we can't take staff that don't exist. Um, so how can that be done creatively? And being clear about what can be flexed and what needs national steer. And that is why we've kind of pulled that definition and those four key elements. We realise, though, that even that is <laughs> excuse me, can be difficult 
for, for example, um, island boards where there is a, a, a really different way of working. So we are working with NHS Orkney at the moment um, to find out how they can look at a slightly different model of delivering that care. Um, and I wanted to end on what I think is really important and it's what do patients think about hospital at home. I'm not going to read these quotes out to you, but these are quotes from services that we work with where they've received this patient feedback. And I think it's really effective. I think this is the so what of hospital at home. What difference does it make to, to these patients? Um, I'm going to leave that slide up, but that is where I'm going to end. 